Six days ago, Russia's Vladimir Putin sought to shake the very foundations of the free world, thinking he could make it bend to his menacing ways. But he badly miscalculated. He thought he could roll into Ukraine and the world would roll over. Instead, he met with a wall of strength he never anticipated or imagined. He met the Ukrainian people. The President Zelensky, to, their, to every Ukrainian, their fearlessness, their courage, their determination literally inspires the world. Groups of citizens blocking tanks with their bodies, everyone from students to retirees to teachers, turned soldiers defending their homeland. And in this struggle, President Zelensky said in his speech to the European Parliament, Light will win over darkness. The Ukrainian ambassador to the United States is here tonight, sitting with the First Lady. Let each of us, if you're able to stand, stand and send an unmistakable signal to the world of Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. She's bright, she's strong, and she's resolved. Yes. We, the United States of America, stand with the Ukrainian people. Throughout tonight, I say to the Russian oligarchs and the corrupt leaders, who built billions of dollars off this violent regime, no more. The United States, I mean it. The United States Department of Justice is assembling a dedicated task force to go after the crimes of the Russian oligarchs. We're joining with European allies to find and seize their yachts, their luxury apartments, their private jets. We're coming for you, ill-begotten gains. And tonight, I'm announcing that we will join our allies in closing off American airspace to all Russian flights, further isolating Russia and adding additional squeeze on their economy. He has no idea what's coming. The ruble has already lost 30 percent of its value. The Russian stock market has lost 40 percent of its value, and trading remains suspended. The Russian economy is reeling, and Putin alone is the one to blame. Together with our allies, we're providing support to the Ukrainians in their fight for freedom. Military assistance, economic assistance, humanitarian assistance, we're giving more than a billion dollars of direct assistance to Ukraine, and we'll continue to aid the Ukrainian people as they defend their country and help ease their suffering. I told Xi Jinping, it's never been a good bet to bet against the American people. We'll create good jobs for millions of Americans, modernizing roads, airports, ports, waterways, all across America. And we'll do it to withstand the devastating effects of climate change and promote environmental justice. We'll build a national network of 500,000 electric vehicle charging stations. We meet tonight in an America that has lived through two of the hardest years this nation has ever faced. The pandemic has been punishing, and so many families are living paycheck to paycheck, struggling to keep up with the rising cost of food, gas, housing, and so much more. I understand, like many of you did, my dad had to leave his home in Scranton, Pennsylvania, to find work. So like many of you, I grew up in a family. When the price of food went up, it was felt throughout the family. It had an impact. That's when one of the first things I did as president was fight to pass the American Rescue Plan. Because people were hurting, we needed to act, and we did. Few pieces of legislation have done more at a critical moment in our history to lift us out of a crisis. It fueled our efforts to vaccinate the nation and combat COVID-19, delivered immediate economic relief to tens of millions of Americans. It helped put food on the table 
Remember those long lines of cars waiting for hours just to get a box of food put in their trunk? It cut the cost of health care insurance. And as my dad used to say, it gave the people just a little bit of breathing room. Unlike the $2 trillion tax cut passed in the previous administration that benefited the top 1 percent of Americans, the American Rescue Plan — the American Rescue Plan helped working people and left no one behind. <laughs> Folks, and it worked. It worked. It worked. We created jobs, lots of jobs. In fact, our economy created over 6.5 million new jobs just last year. More jobs in one year than ever before in the history of the United States of America. The economy grew at a rate of 5.7 last year, the strongest growth rate in 40 years. And tonight, I'm announcing that this year, we will start fixing over 65,000 miles of highway and 1,500 bridges in disrepair. And folks, when we use taxpayers' dollars to rebuild America, we're going to do it by buying America, buy American products, support American jobs. The federal government spends about $600 billion a year to keep this country safe and secure. There's been a law in the books for almost a century to make sure taxpayers' dollars support American jobs and businesses. Every administration, Democrat and Republican, says they'll do it, but we're actually, we're actually doing it. We'll buy America to make sure every, everything from the deck of an aircraft carrier to the steel on highway guardrails is made in America from beginning to end. All of it. All of it. One way to fight inflation is to drive down wages and make Americans poor. I think I have a better idea to fight inflation. Lower your costs, not your wages. <laughs> Folks, that means make more cars and semiconductors in America, more infrastructure and innovation in America, more goods moving faster and cheaper in America, more jobs where you can earn a good living in America. Instead of relying on foreign supply chains, let's make it in America. Look, economists, economists, call this increasing the productive capacity of our, economy, of our economy. I call it building a better America. Above all, we should be bipartisan on this issue. Nothing would make Putin happier than having Democrats and Republicans divided. President Biden has done an incredibly good job on Ukraine. All the naysayers, a lot of our Republican friends wanted us to pass the sanctions bill before uh, uh, the Russians invaded. That would have torn the alliance apart. The Europeans would have walked away. Now we have seen, amazingly, everyone predicted, oh, they won't do SWIFT. They won't do the Russian Central Bank. But with the European support and encouragement, and they suffer far more from these sanctions than we do, it's all happening. So. I believe that President Biden's done a great job. I believe the country uh, wants to follow his lead. I believe the country does not want to see partisan fights. We're going to work on a bipartisan, robust aid package with both military and security needs. There are very good discussions going on about that right now. Um, my, uh, the best place to include it is in the upcoming omnibus bill, and that's what we intend to get done.
the omnibus bus is the, uh, bill is the quickest way to get it done. You just put a bill on the floor, you rule 14 it, you wait for amendments, you wait for agreement. The omnibus is the quickest and most efficient way to get this done. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I, mean, I think there's broad support <clears throat> for the president and what he's doing now. Our biggest complaint is what took him so long? Much of this might have deterred the aggression in advance. But yes, we're all together behind uh, the Ukrainian people. We're thrilled at the changes that have occurred in NATO. And um, I think I've seen our country pretty unified. And as a matter of fact, <clears throat> the whole world seems to be unified. I mean, who would have thought we'd see demonstrations in the streets of Russian cities? <clears throat> that takes some courage as well. What President Putin is, is a ruthless thug who's just invade, invaded another sovereign country and killed thousands of innocent people. That's what President Putin is. President Zelensky and the heroism of the Ukrainian military and the Ukrainian people. We have none of this ever happens in our country. Uh, we need a president that's going to show up. He needs to do everything he can to hold Putin, the thugs around him, every, you know, the economy of Russia accountable. We've got to do every sanction we can do. We've got to do everything to cripple their economy. Every dime that goes to Russia helps Putin. So all of us can do our part. There shouldn't be a lobbyist in this country that does any work to help the Russian government or any thug out of Russia or Russian businesses. All of us, we can stop buying their products. Retailers can stop selling their products. And then what Congress can do, we can go, we can go and make sure that we, they, Ukraine has all the resources they can to defend themselves. So I hope all of us do our part to do everything we can to hold Putin accountable and make sure the Ukrainian citizens keep their independence. We have all watched the terror unfold on our television sets, with Ukrainians being indiscriminately killed by Russian soldiers as they're standing in the path of their tanks and their vehicles. We see the bombing that's going on in Ukrainian cities. We are in horror here in the United States, and the American people want to do more to support Ukrainians. So there are things that we can do right now, today, working on bills that will put further sh sanctions on Vladimir Putin and the Russians, especially on their energy sector. We can provide additional lethal aid to the Ukrainian forces and their militia that are fighting to defend their homeland. We should be unleashing American energy independence.